Where you at if you been in shit? Go ahead to youtube.com backslash waterway TV and subscribe to that shit. Yeah, you know the waves in it. Baseball, we're hitting a home run, hit it with the coldest winds. And even on my bad days, I'm a clutch to finish. The track diminished, the booth burnt hands is itching. Damn. We live, we live, we live, Waterway fam. We are back with another special podcast interview, whatever you want to call these things. We got Parker Fox in the building. Yo, what up, Ricky? Appreciate you having me. Yeah, Swaggy P, P Fox, whatever. Long overdue interview, but we got a lot to talk about for show. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're here now, though. Yeah. We're here now. I've been in this place probably, what, like 10, 15 times, and we're finally on the mic, so happy to be here, brother. Of course. Uh, It's Monday, so I usually like to say, how was your weekend? How are you doing? Weekend was good. What did I do this weekend? I went to my cabin, so I chilled at the cabin with the fam, you know, last weekend before school starts, so um, just was chilling with the fam a little bit, and then... You know, a long weekend, so nothing today. We had lift this morning, and now I'll just kick it the rest of the day. So, yeah, good, chill weekend. Thanks. Uh, yeah, Parker Fox, they all know he is a high school student from Matamide. Or not, he went to high school in Matamide. He's not a high school student in Matamide anymore. 2017, man. I'm 2017 old, I'm old. alum, so he's a local basketball legend. Went to school at Northern State, and now he's at the Gophers, so we got a lot to talk about. But let's start with your high school career, uh, graduating in 2017. Uh, how were you in high school? Did you know like you were that guy like your whole way growing up, or did you did it kind of click later in your career? Man, that's a good question. I just, I knew that I loved sports, you know, like mm-hmm. I knew sports were gonna be my life, whether I played it professionally or whether I like, you know, worked in sports or, or something of that matter. But um, so I started sports at an early age, and mm-hmm. um, once I got into high school, I knew basketball was like what I loved. You know, mm-hmm. it was the sport that I liked better than all the other sports, and. Uh, I did track as well in high school. I was a, I was a high jumper. Um, I went to state a couple times, and um, you know I, I did all right. You know I placed in state, state and that kind of stuff. I jumped six eight, so I have our school record and our wow. conference record and all that kind of stuff. So you know something that it was interesting for me to to do and something outside of basketball kept me busy. But um, you know I knew basketball was it for me. Um, freshman year I was. I was not physically ready, but I had like the skill set. You know, I was mm-hmm. I was five eight one twenty my freshman year of high school, so I was just a, I was just a little dude. And um, but I still loved the sport. I knew I was gonna grow eventually because my dad's six eight, so mm-hmm. I knew I was gonna grow at some point. But um, so I finally grew a little bit in sophomore year. I was about six three. Junior year about six six. Uh, junior year is when I exploded. My sophomore year, I didn't play at all. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe saw the court, you know, at the you know at the end of the games and uh, the minutes that don't really count. But junior year is when I exploded. Um, averaged more than twenty points a game. You know, a bunch of rebounds. I led the state. In sco- I laid the state in scoring for a, a good portion of that season. Um, and then you know, going to my senior year. Um, I didn't have, you know, the kind of offers I wanted, to be honest with you, like mm-hmm. um, went into the AAU circuit and played really well, you know, had had a good team. I wasn't playing for, um, you know, the powerhouse program. I was playing for Minnesota Heat. Um, you know, I played mm-hmm. for them my whole life. So uh, I wanted to stay true to that and, and keep with them. Um, so I stayed with them. And then, um, you know, summer went by and, you know, I was racking up like NAIA offers and that kind of stuff. And to be honest with you, I only had one Division two offer out of high school, and it was to Northern State, and it was, uh, you know, like a $5,000 scholarship. So it was really nothing, mm-hmm. and, um, you know, that kind of it kind of pissed me off, you know. And um, the assistant co- a coach that recruited me, um, you know, basically told me, like, let this kind of thing fuel you, you know, let it, uh, let it kind of, you know, give you that motivation. And I was always the kind of guy that, you know, I didn't need um, – people that tell me the motivation I kind of had it figured out myself mm-hmm. um so I, I just grinded and um you know that's kind of the that's kind of the high school story but you know just kind of being overlooked and, and having to go out there and kind of prove to people that you know I was good enough and then mm-hmm. you know senior year rolled around and you know led led the state in scoring um you know was up for metro player of the year all that kind of stuff so um we had a good team too. Went twenty four and four. Won the conference. Won the Metro East Championship over um, over Tartan and like North St. Paul and those kind of schools. So um, just love the dudes I play with. You know, still really close friends to this day. And mm-hmm. um, so yeah, that's kind of the high school story. Fire. Yeah. So that tenth grade going to eleventh grade year where you said you didn't play very much and then and then you became like one of the better players yeah. in the whole state basically. Mm-hmm. What did you what what would you do that? off season or was it just growth waiting you for the opportunity like what did yeah. what made that leap i think it's just it was a kind of like a a, a joint of all that kind of stuff mm-hmm. you know and um but it was really that summer was when i realized that i loved basketball mm-hmm. and i think that's a difference for for young kids coming up that don't 
really get it yet. You know, they like they like sports and they like doing it. But like when you really when you really love it, then you can you know go to that next level. And you can't you can't reach that next level till you fully invest yourself and you fully love it. Mm-hmm. And so I would lock myself in the gym for hours. You know, I would tell the custodian would shut the lights off and I would ask him, I was like, can I stay a little bit longer? And I'd, you know, bring my own lights or something like that. I mm-hmm. literally would bring my own lights sometimes. And, um, you know, everything I'd go to the track and there'd be a tire up there and I'd just push it. I didn't know what the hell I was doing, but I would just push it because, mm-hmm. you know, I felt like I was doing something right. Mm-hmm. And I think just falling in love with it, the game kind of loves you back, you know? Yeah. And I think that's with at the, anything you do in life is like, if you really devote your time and your energy and your effort into it, it's going to eventually come back to you in some sort of way, you know, mm-hmm. whether it's karma or whatever you call that kind of stuff is, yeah. it's going to give you that love back. And, and that's what basketball did to me, um, you know, for me in high school and, and allowed me to, um, you know, continue to chase the dream that in 10th grade kind of seemed possible, but you know, not, not necessarily mm-hmm. something that I was maybe going to be able to do maybe at like a D three level or something like that, which is great too. But you know, I, I wanted more than that. And I love the game too much to, you know, hold myself in a box. So yeah. yeah. That uh, so you mentioned your dad was really tall. Did, did he play basketball? Does it run in the family at all? Yeah, it definitely runs in the family. He's uh, he's more of a basketball mind than he was a um, you know, basketball player. He played in high school and he mm-hmm. didn't play in college, but you know, he still coaches my high school to this day. So, mm-hmm. um, he's the uh, assistant JV coach. So he loves the game. Um, I think that's where I get it from. You know, he'll he'll like send me an Instagram clip of of some workout and something like that. So he loves the game just as much as I do, which is mm-hmm. fun because we have that you know special bond and relationship with. My brother as well who plays and um you know basketball kind of runs in our house so yeah Thanks. yeah no Fine. doubt yeah like was uh was basketball like always your your like first passion like i remember when i was a little kid like there's pictures of me with like a little baseball bat and a little baseball when i was like one or two years old you know like was it like did you have the little the little tykes hoop and the oh, ball yeah. like that was like off rip like, no, you remember the first time you like picked oh, yeah. up basketball no question no i'm pretty sure my dad gave me one in the you know in the crib when i was born mm-hmm. but um yeah we had a little tykes hoop downstairs and mm-hmm. my dad it's funny because um we just went to our old house the other day and my dad drove me by because we were in the neighborhood and He's like, this is the hoop that I put up in the yard for y'all so you could hoop in it and mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, hoops. I mean, like I said, sports started at a young age, but it was really always going to be basketball. You know, I, I love mm-hmm. football. I played football. I love soccer. I played soccer. And, but at the end of the day, I knew it was going to be basketball. It was just a matter of, you know, when I decided to devote all my time and energy to it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we kind of breezed over the track thing, but high jumping 6'8 is – that's yeah. hard. I did, I did high jump my senior year because – I knew I was going to go play college football, so I was like, I'm going to do track instead of baseball my senior year just to get in better yeah. shape. And I was not touching six feet, I'll tell you that. <laughs> like, I think that one person on our team maybe got close to the 6'8", but like, yeah. he did, I don't think he got that high. But that's, no, that's, yeah. a, that's, a, that's a high jump. Yeah, it was fun. Did, it, was, it was something that I kind of like – I wanted to do, but also like I didn't like want to invest my time, like too much time in it. Cause I had basketball, you know, like yeah. I had summer basketball. So I had to be at AAU practice and all that kind of stuff. So I told my track coach, I was like, you know, I could show up to practice maybe twice a week because that's all the time I actually have. You know, would you still want me on the team? I'd love to compete. I'd love to be a part of the team. And he mm-hmm. said, sure. So, you know, I did it. And I think if I would have put more time and effort, energy into it, I could have been a really pretty good high jumper because, you know, I'm a pretty athletic dude and yeah. I'm long and, you know, got a good, you know, just, I just got a good feel in the air. Like if you watch me play basketball, you know, like yeah. it's something that's kind of like an instinctual thing that like when you're in the air, you know how to like contort your body kind of deal. So, yeah. So, I mean, I want, you know, set the conference record actually my senior year and um, it was something fun for me and, um, you know, it's a really good um really good just like hangout sport too you know because mm-hmm. there's so many people in it and you know you're not doing something at all times so you can hang out and kick it with your boys and so i had a couple boys in track and we would just kick it and hang out mm-hmm. and it was a good time man i liked it it was chill yeah it was just, it's definitely good to help with basketball skills oh too. yeah for sure and yeah. running too you know yeah. getting on the track getting in shape you know for for the summer season and all that kind of stuff mm-hmm. it's important yep so let's talk about the decision to go to northern state were they they were the only d2 school or by the end of your senior year you get a little bit more no yeah so i uh i actually committed pretty early i committed in like going into my senior year so i didn't wait it off or anything like that um but they were the only school that offered me at that point Mm -hmm. um so i went up to aberdeen south dakota which is about five and a half hours northwest of the cities and so i went up there and i was like you know i'm gonna go give this school a try and it was nothing like I came from like the football field was in the middle of a cornfield and like it was really in the middle of kind of nowhere um mm-hmm. but they loved basketball and they had a rich tradition of basketball and um they had a really lot of talent on the team so I go to northern and my freshman year they redshirt me because mm-hmm. I'm 
probably not good enough to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. And that team goes to a national championship game. So, um, you know, you sit there and be like, damn, I wish I was playing. Like, you want to be like, damn, why isn't the coach playing me and all that kind of stuff? But at the end of the day, like, he did something right. We were playing in a national championship. So, yeah. um, you know, definitely the early the early um, commitment was, was one that um, kind of went fast. But also, like, I knew it was the spot for me to expand my game because, you know, there was really no distractions. There was... You know, there was a focus on basketball, so I just got to lock in and, and just work my ass off all day, every day. And because, you know, I knew I could get to a point where I wanted to go. And I had, you mm-hmm. know, two guys in front of me that were both seniors. And, you know, one was an All American, one was an All Conference kind of guy. And I was like, I can be just as good, if not better, than these guys. So, mm-hmm. um, and, and they saw it too, you know, working with them and, and they would help me out. So I credit those guys to this day. Um, you know, Logan Doyle and Carter Evans, two guys that, um, I'm grateful for because they pushed me every single day and they, they would they would beat my ass up every single day in practice mm-hmm. like I was a little kid and they were two big bullies and like it really helped me grow and, and and develop the strength and physicality and you know just take my take myself to a next level for sure mm-hmm. yeah I think I watched a, one like an interview you did uh, almost a year ago now but it was like mm-hmm. you said like some of the people you met there people like your, your buddies for life being your wedding oh, yeah. shit stuff like mm-hmm. that and that's kind of how it was with, uh, when I went to college and played college football like Calvino and mm-hmm. Reese he didn't play football but like he was in college but Calvino and um, a few of the other water wave guys that like just be around or even just like people that I, I clicked with and met in college you have just as strong bonds if not stronger bonds than people you went to high school with it's just like because it's like everyone's there for like the same mission and you find people that you can get on the same dream and path with and it's like yeah. a whole different way oh yeah no without a doubt i'll have you know got some guys that are you know mean the world to me that are um that i met at northern i never thought i'd you know meet like mm-hmm. you know going up there really small school three thousand maybe two thousand kids mm-hmm. so you know really small school and um, you know, something that I never thought, you know, I had really good relationships and good friendships in high school and, um, you know, just guys that are really good dudes. So mm-hmm. yeah, it was, it was a special place and it was a, it was a hard place to leave, but, um, you know, definitely a special place for me. Mm-hmm. So your, your last year there, when you graduated, you guys actually won the national title, right? That, that was your last we year We won there? the conference the last year. Yeah. The conference yeah, last yeah, year, yeah, the conference yeah. title. Mm-hmm. Um, and you, I looked up your stats a little bit your last season, averaged just 19.9, just under 20 points, 8.8 rebounds per game in the 2019, 2020 season. That was your last season there, right? Yeah, I think so. Or just 2020, 2021. Yeah, 2020, 2021 would have been my last season. So oh. that was like the – that was the year that got shut down for COVID. Oh, so it wasn't like a full-on season, mm-hmm. right? No, it got shut down That's for COVID. That's probably why they gave me the stats yeah, for like yeah, the full yeah. season so when then, I looked up yeah. the last stats there. Yeah, yeah. So then the, um, that um, that year was the year that got shut down. Then the year after was um, – when we went to the Sweet 16, we lost in the Sweet 16. Mm. Um, and that was, I think I averaged like 23 and 10 that year, something yeah. like that. So, yeah, that was a good year. And, um, you know, it was weird because it was like – it was kind of an abbreviated year because of COVID. So we didn't get to play a preseason. We mm-hmm. didn't get to play none. Like, we went straight into conference play and, you know, straight into the NCAA tournament. And, you know, everything was with masks. And we went to places without fans and that kind yeah. of deal and, and all that kind of stuff. So it was weird for sure. But, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, I, I kind of – I didn't really, I don't, I couldn't imagine what it'd be like for sports at that time. Cause I was out of sports at that time and I wasn't going to any sports cause I'd just been a fan. So it's all just on TV. Like, did that, did like no fans, did that help, help you focus or did that like help you not focus? Like, you know, that's, that was the worst ever, bro. Like I'm, I'm the type of dude that like is going to score a layup and try to get the fans going yeah. you know, on some basic, like simple stuff. And I'm just like, if you know me, if you see me on the court, I'm just like, I'm a competitor and I love, you can just tell I love the game, you mm-hmm. know, like it's just a different kind of like locked in. Like I'm still like kind of goofy and hanging out with my teammates and clowning my coach and all that kind of stuff. But like when it comes down to it, like it's, 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 it's a different beast. And I just, mm-hmm. I just love competing. I love winning. Like, yeah, I just, I just hate losing. So, um, you know, it was, it was tough with, with no fans, but at the same time we were pretty good. You know, we were 19 to one the regular season. So, mm-hmm. um, we would kind of steamroll some teams and that kind of stuff. And, you know, made it a little easier. And then they brought fans back at our home games and, uh, had basically no restrictions. So we were able to kind of, you know, interact with them and, you know, people on the courtside seats and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, it was it was rocking. We had it rocking for the Sweet 16, which was actually in our home gym in Aberdeen, and we had, like, 4,000 people or something there during COVID. So it was, like, yeah. kind of unheard of. Like, nobody else had fans. But yeah. South Dakota had some looser restrictions. So, yeah, we were able to do that. And, unfortunately, we lost the game. But um, to this day was the most fun I ever had doing anything in my life. You know, mm-hmm. even, even though we lost that game, like, I'll think back about that game and – 
the adrenaline I had. Like I played 40 whatever minutes, and including overtime, and I wasn't tired. Never came out of the game. I wasn't tired because it was just like it was the most fun. It was doing what I love to do, and I had mm-hmm. such a fun time doing it. And yeah, I'll remember that one forever. It was uh, it was tough, you know. Actually, I the game ended. We went to the locker room and had our conversation, all that kind of stuff. And I went back on the court, and you know, the janitor shut the lights off and everything. And I just sat underneath the hoop until like 2 a.m. And I just like because I knew I was leaving Northern at that point. So um, I kind of just sat there and, you know, just thought about all my times and memories and all that kind of stuff. It's all the people I had. And, um, you know, I was knew I was about to enter the transfer portal and, and decide where to go next. But I just sat there on the court. I, just, I couldn't get up for like three hours because I was like, Damn. I just need to just like take this time for myself. And that was, mm-hmm. you know, that was kind of when I realized like professionally that I want to make it my life, you know, mm-hmm. like I, I knew I had loved it like and, and all that kind of stuff through college. But I was like, dang, I'm at a. I'm at another level right now, mm-hmm. like basketball wise. Like, I think that game I had like 36 and 14 or something like that, like mm-hmm. some crazy stat line. And we're playing against the best team in the country. We're playing against, you know, two guys that played on summer league teams this year. So, had really good talent in the gym. And um, I just sat there and was like, damn, I, I want to make it my life. So, um, you know, I took a week off after that and just like chilled out. And then I got back to the grind and, um, you know, obviously entered the portal. So, yeah. Damn. Yeah, that was going to be my next was like getting into that transfer portal. And, I mean, not to pass by you sitting under the hoop, I think that that's like that's like you kind of giving your thanks to, like, what they did for you, what you got to do for them, like, where they got you. Because, like, um, I remember when I first heard, like, I kind of first heard about you probably when you did transfer to the U yeah. because I, I'm from Mankato originally, so, like, I wasn't too in tune with, like, basketball scene. Yeah, we did graduate in the same class, so I knew, like, people that were in my conference and, like, our – when whoever we'd play in state were like 4A or whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah. 3A or something like that. So, like, I kind of knew those people, but I didn't know too much outside of, like, the cities and, yeah, you know, all that type of stuff. So, like, when I heard about you coming to Minnesota and a lot of people were, like, it seemed like you had really good buzz and everyone was fucking with you online. I'm like, who is this guy? And I find out, you know, you're from here, you're a local. And then I look up, like, Parker Fox highlights on YouTube and you have a lot of people breaking you down, like, breaking down your highlights. Like, is this guy the next biggest thing out of D2? Like, all this crazy type of stuff but i mean it all looked correct on the on the film right i was like and then um like you know there's like is this the best thing to come out of d2 transfer portal 50 d1 offers like all this stuff so you go from having one d2 offer to i don't maybe it was over exaggerating but 50 around 50 d1 offers from and then a lot of them from like good schools too like what was that transfer portal like finishing at northern and how i guess how does the transfer portal work for people that yeah, don't really understand I mean, it's crazy it's a free-for-all so mm-hmm. like you said like going from sitting underneath that hoop like thinking about my time at northern like you know really putting my memory in and you know in a memory box and like locking it in because I, it was such a special place for me and I, mm-hmm. I knew i had to leave because i had accomplished everything there already you know i was you know player of the year and two-time defensive player of the year all that kind of stuff mm-hmm. and so i knew it was my time to leave um i didn't know where i was going yet for sure you know i was obviously minnesota's in the back of my head and you know it was somewhere that i grew up loving it was really special for me but um so basically what happens is you know you go in and you tell your coach and the you know the athletic person or whatever it is that you want to enter the portal um, so they put you in there and like a right when they put you in it's a free reign for any coach so I probably got put in it was like a Tuesday or a Wednesday and I probably got put in there to like 10 45 and I was still in my coach's office so I got the emails like oh you're in the transfer portal so I was like you know we had a good relationship so you know all that kind of stuff and then I went home and I actually went to my buddy's apartment because I didn't think anything was gonna be too crazy yet and by the time I got to my buddy's apartment I had like eight missed calls and all this like my phone was just blowing up and I, my phone was already at like 50 percent or something like that so mm-hmm. i was like i need to find a charger first of all because <laughs> i was like this is gonna get crazy so I, you know i had i had some feelers out there in some schools that i knew was gonna call you know i probably had um you know a couple different schools but i didn't think it was gonna be as crazy as it was and mm-hmm. you know i got the first call my first call was from vanderbilt and we talked for a while and by the time i got done with my first call i had like 14 missed calls so it was just like it was insane because i you know i knew i was you know, a pretty good player and, a, you know, highly touted guy in the portal. But I didn't know that like, ESPN ranked me as, like, one of the best, you know, transfers in the mm-hmm. country and all that kind of stuff. And so I didn't know it was going to be as crazy as it was. So, you know, like I told some people, I spent days, like, the whole freaking day, like, literally I would eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Other than that, I would be talking on the phone. Mm-hmm. And, like, that was – it was cool because I didn't get to go through it, right? You know, like, in high school I had D2 t- schools calling me, which was, don't get me wrong, really cool, but, like, 
I had Patrick Ewing on FaceTime. I had Rick Pitino on Zoom. I had, you know, if you're a basketball fan, like this is the kind of shit that you like, you live for, you know, mm-hmm. like being able to talk to these kind of guys and uh, being able to interact with them and talk. Like I got to sit down and with, you know, Zoom sessions with Jerry Stackhouse and watch plays and dissect plays like, you know, Penny Hardaway, all that kind of stuff. Like these guys are NBA greats that are I get to watch and learn from. So mm-hmm. I took it for, um, I took it really important to me and, it, you know, something that I, um, yeah, obviously was, I was trying to find my school, but I was also, also trying to like learn about the basketball process more and that kind of deal. And, uh, so I eventually cut it down to eight. Um, and then when I cut it down to eight, I, uh, you know, I actually came back home and I was like, I told my mom and my dad, I was like, I want to go down to the campus of Minnesota and just like try to envision myself there. Mm-hmm. And when I did that, it was, it was over with like, there, there wasn't, I wasn't going anywhere else, you mm-hmm. know, like. I just knew like being from here and you know coming back and like i i didn't have this opportunity at high school i think mm-hmm. that's what kind of had it too is like like if minnesota would have offered me at high school which was kind of not realistic you know hell yeah like no question yes coach i will be there tomorrow type yeah. of deal you know and and now that it's and now that it's real and it's there and they want me you know it's it wasn't like you know had to walk on or yeah, something yeah for no it was like it was like no we need you dude like you're gonna mm-hmm. come and start and you're gonna come and play for us and you're gonna be a, a player here and i was like hell yeah. like yes like i came here i was like yes there's no like i can't go anywhere else now mm-hmm. so yeah that's kind of how the process went for me i think it's different for everybody for sure but like it was kind of overwhelming for me but i enjoyed it and i tried to like stay positive and, and, and stay in it at all times for sure mm-hmm. facts yeah I, I mean that's you're kind of doing something that uh i think the gophers wish they could have gotten a lot more over the past few years is getting the hometown kids to come and stay at the Gophers. You know, a lot of really good Hoopers come out of Minnesota and then they go to the power teams, you know, the the Dukes, the Kansas, the Gonzagas, whatever it may be. Like, like no shade to all of them because it's like, you know, if you have a chance to win a national championship a little bit easier at one other spot, maybe do it. But it's like, if you just got, I mean, Minnesota, if, if the top, Minnesota's high school team, if you grab five players, like five of the top ten people out of the graduating class this year, I'm sure you could put almost on a national championship in a year or two at, oh, yeah. at Minnesota. Because, no, like, I don't think not everyone knows how many good basketball players come out of Minnesota. Like, I feel like we were known for hockey for so long, but, like, our basketball scene is insane. Yeah, we have way more talent than, you know, people think, and, and mm-hmm. it shows in, you know, in runs in the summer when we have the, you know, the pro guys come back it's like those runs are next level and mm-hmm. it's like if you were able to get guys like you know gary trent and the hurt brothers and mckinley right and mm-hmm. for those very guys for example like you you get them to you know decide to stay home mm-hmm. and they want to too that's the crazy yeah. thing is like people wanted to stay home and i think that's that's what's so exciting about coach ben and, and what we're doing here at minnesota is you know mm-hmm. we got this year we got three of the top guys in minnesota and they're going to be good players for us mm-hmm. um you know i come back jameson battle comes back you know you got a guy like trayton thompson um all that kind of stuff is building on what we want to be and mm-hmm. um it's just a building block you know it's like you know we laid the foundation down and now it's like how can we continue to build this up and i think it's I think it's important because, um, you know, at the end of the day, like I'm from here, I want it to be successful. You know, when mm-hmm. I, I want it to, I want to, you know, leave it better than I found it, you know, type of deal. So when I leave this place, like, you know, I want to make sure I left it better than, than when I, when I came here and, you know, built it up. And, um, that's why it's important for me. Like when we have recruits on campus to get with them, like, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm probably never going to play with you because I'm, I'm almost 24 years old now, but, mm-hmm. um, you know, I want you to feel what I feel and I want you to be proud of, you know, being from Minnesota. And, and that's been something that's, you know, became really important to me for sure. Yeah. You've yeah. Like, kind of almost been like the big brand ambassador for the yeah. basketball team. Yeah. Kind of, it seems like trying to, man. very brandable person. Uh, but so when you, you, uh, you enter the portal, you commit to the Gophers and then unfortunately like a few months later, whatever you get injured training, right. Yeah. Um, having to give your coach that call, like what was that going through your mind? Like at that, like that day, like I'm sure it's not a good memory, but like, no, that's the craziest. Yeah. It's the craziest probably day in my life because I had mm-hmm. really just kind of committed like not too long ago. And, mm-hmm. Um, you know, I called coach Ben and was like, you know, I was crying already on the phone to be honest yeah. with you. Like, He's like, what's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? And I'm like, I tore my knee. And he's like, oh. and he's like, it's fine. Like, it's all good. Like, he didn't waver at all. Yeah. And I was like, what? I was like, like I had talked to my parents. I was like, what is he gonna say? Is he gonna like take the scholarship away? All that kind of stuff. No, he didn't waver at all. He's mm-hmm. like, that's fine. We're gonna get you right. We're gonna get you back. And I mm-hmm. was like, I was like, what? Like, how, like that doesn't make like I what? Like I I couldn't understand it, you know. Mm-hmm. And he's like, no, nah, we want you here. Like. 
it's bigger it's just bigger than basketball you know and mm -hmm. when he said that shit i was like yeah like i i knew i had made the right choice you yeah know? and you know it was you know obviously tough and it was i was dealing with all these different emotions but that trust and faith that he had in me and you know just being able to you know know the kind of guy i am that i'm gonna work my ass off and get back and be better and all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff and um and i was just really grateful for that so I, you know that made me really know like yeah I, I made the right choice type of deal yeah everything happens for a reason because let's just say you say you commit to another school that has no heartfelt for you besides your basketball career and like how Drop good you how, how good you can dunk they may move on to the next person so it's like everything happens for a reason so it's like, unfortunately, you got injured, but fortunately, you picked the right home that's yeah. going to treat you no, with the most respect and the most empathy and however you want to say is it. A, this, you know, it's a billion dollar business. You yeah. know, at the end of the day, these, you know, college athletics, we get a scholarship and we get, you know, some NIL stuff now, but it's a billion dollar business. And, mm. and if they got a kid with a torn ACL versus a kid who might not be as good, but he can play right away, like, come on, bro. Like, realistically, at the end of the day, like, yeah, you might feel bad for the kid, but you're going to dump them and you're going to move on. It's just, it's just the way coaches have to be, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and that's the difference with Ben is like, you know, he, he, he loved on me, you know, he didn't be like, why'd you, why'd you tear it? Or, you know, like, mm -hmm. bro, like why just, are you working so hard? Yeah. You like know? take some yeah. time off or go home. Yeah. And like, he just loved on me. And, and that, yeah. you know, that made the rehab process so much better for me too. So. Nice. Yeah. So then you spend your whole uh, first season here, like sideline on the bench. Um, I still feel like you probably were pretty good at like, a uh, locker room leader practice leader yeah. um even just on that like one day when you brought the vlog around it seemed like everyone loves having you around like and um, whatever you got going on but what what was it like spending um basically a full season sideline i don't know if you ever had to do that in the past like yeah no, i had to never do that, but... i had never been sidelined for an injury or, or anything i might have missed like a game and that's tough and mm -hmm. it's the hardest thing to do as an athlete um mentally mm -hmm. you know physically is obviously a beast too your body hurts at all times but the mental stressors and, and the things you deal with every single day like that's the toughest part mm -hmm. and and what makes it even tougher is you don't want other people to see you down you know like you're supposed to be you know the guy or, or you know a leader or that kind of deal so so you want to portray that to, to all people and that's something that i really you know battled with and, and and tried to figure out because i wanted to look tough and look strong it's like everything's gonna be okay especially you know especially when it's not about you at the end of the day you mm -hmm. know it's bigger than you it's even if i was healthy it still wouldn't be about me you know it, it's about minnesota and it's about the program and it's about winning basketball games so and, you know now that i'm hurt it's, it's you know not that it's less about me but you know I, I i tried to be unselfish with it and, and feed off on others and give others love and um, be the guy on the bench that's always bringing energy and hype you know even mm -hmm. even if i wasn't you know going home and and being this super happy guy you know portraying that confidence and that that energy onto other people was so important to me so yeah it was man it was tough but um you know it was something that I think it's going to make me, you know, a better person and a better player at the end of the day. So, yeah, yeah. it seems like, I mean, at the end of the day, it's just building up more hype and more, uh, I say like your resume is going to be built even more. Like when you come back, you hit that court for the first time and you have a good game, they're going to be like, damn, he didn't let none of that shit phase him. Oh. Like, like, like I, I was, I was super excited to watch you play. And then, as of recently, you kind of you tweaked your knee, your other knee, now most recently, right? Yeah. So and, I did the exact same injury to my right knee. Damn. Cause like I didn't, even, cause like I didn't know about, I didn't know about that. Like, uh, but then one day I think Trayton came in the store and said something about about you and your knee or whatever, and I was like, what? He's like, oh yeah, you didn't you see it was all over Twitter or whatever. Everyone's talking, you know, news articles, whatever. And I was like, I almost started like, I felt like tearing up a little bit, cause I was, bro, I was so excited for like your just your comeback to happen now like it's gonna happen yeah. but like for it to be happening this season so like could you i don't know how public knowledge it is exactly of what you have injured wise and what's portrayed yeah. publicly but like do you know uh, like yeah. what's wrong with it how long it should be or yeah so I'll, the exact same injury okay. to my left knee so it's you know a 12 month recovery process so i'll be out all year again um the craziest thing is i was you know people say you're gonna be better and faster strong. so i tore the left one right and mm -hmm. 14 months later back in practice balling out like i was having my best practice that day mm -hmm. you know, i was you know athletic again had a 40 inch vertical you know squatting you know f whatever 600 pounds on safety mm -hmm. like you know all that stuff like there was i 
I was back. You know, mm-hmm. I was better actually. I'm not gonna lie, I was better. I I expanded my outside game a little bit better. My handle got tighter. I was a smarter player because I saw the game at a D1 level. All that stuff, like all that shit, is true. And mm-hmm. then you know, I get back into practice, and on the most fluke incident, I was literally like, I was passing the ball. I go to pass the ball. I put my leg down, and my knee goes, and I'm like, oh shit, like. That's that's literally all that went in my head. I was like, oh. like, I, I, my eyes were open wide, and I looked at my coach, and he was like, "What? Did you make a good pass?" And I was like, "No, I tore my ACL." He goes, "Oh no, stop bullshitting me. Like, you know, whatever. Get back." And I'm like, "No, I'm not kidding you, bro." And he's like, "For real?" And, and finally, he was like, "I'll oh, stay positive. Like, you're gonna be good. All that kind of stuff." And then went and got the MRI, and you know, Doc called me. At, an hour later, I was like, yeah, you tore basically everything in your knee, in your other knee again. And I was like, no way. So we were like, we're going to keep it private, you know, keep it out of the media. And then an hour later, I get an alert on my phone on ESPN. is like Parker Fox tore And he was like, how, first of all, how the hell did this leak? First, yeah. and, and second of all, like, um, you know, what are people do, like, why is this like, because, you know, I was trying to deal with like the mental process of yeah. realizing oh, I'm going to be out for 12, 14 months again, all that kind of deal. And like, now it's on my phone. Now it's public knowledge. You know, it's whatever at the end of the day, because, mm-hmm. you know, I'm, you know, it's it's college sports. You know, like I said, it's a billion dollar industry. Yeah. You know, people it's, find out eventually yeah, whether you get a day or two. To... Exactly. But um, yeah, so the, the, those emotions were doubled mm-hmm. than the first one you know and um but the same thing you know ben was right there by my side and, and all my teammates were right there by my side and you know i, I told coach johnson i was like i'm gonna play for you one day i'm gonna play for you eventually <laughs> so um but now yeah I'm, I'm about 10 weeks out now i have surgery and all that kind of stuff so i'm doing good the rehab's going better than my first rehab so um i'm just grinding and, and trying to stay you know as level-headed as possible and uh, just kind of trust what you know what God's plan is for me and all that kind of stuff and mm-hmm. um, like I mentioned karma earlier like I think I'm trying to do this the right way and go about yeah. it the right way because at the end of the day like you know I saw a tweet the other day it was like I'm due for a miracle and that kind of stuff and I believe that mm-hmm. kind of thing is true it's like if you put it in or do you know give energy the right way energy is going to come back to you and so that's kind of the way I've just been doing this whole thing is just treating people right and um, you know working my ass off and just trying to to get back to what I was because I miss it, man. I do. Fact, yeah, yeah. Bro, I, 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 I could see how you miss it, man. I'd be, I would, I would definitely be, be heartbroken for a while too. Do you, uh, so because of the COVID year, um, in Northern state, you still have two years of eligibility. Yeah. Is there, so, uh, you graduated, you got a degree at Northern and then you're doing like, I don't know how the college stuff works. Yeah. That's so, now. So I you're going for like a, a master's. Deep, you're going for your master's yeah, now. So I got go my degree it. at Northern in sport marketing. Mm-hmm. And I'm about to complete my master's at Minnesota. So I'm entering my sixth year. Mm-hmm. Um, and technically I'm a six year sophomore, which is kind of the craziest thing. For like ever. athletic wise. Yeah, athletic yeah. wise. Yeah. yeah. So, so, you, so is there a, is, is there ever a limit? Cause I feel like there was a gopher player that, from like years ago that was like 28 or something wasn't there like a guy there probably there's like a kicker on the kicker like on the football team this year it's like 28 or something yeah like that, but so like there's, there's never really an age limit for playing in college sports as long as you actually have the classes yeah, to take right yeah, it's like because you know covid made it kind of different where that gave us a year mm-hmm. i went into northern i red shirt that gave me a year mm-hmm. two two knee injuries that's two medical that's a whole season and, or yeah exactly our so, whole career exactly you know so i had four years of basically waiting out so yeah. um you know you got to get waivers and all that kind of stuff and but i think the ncaa is pretty good about you mm-hmm. know if if there's actually hardships and there's something that is keeping you out of the game, they want you to, you know, get, get the year that you deserve to get. So that's that's one nice thing is, mm-hmm. you know, I'd be done if it wasn't the case for that. And, and if there's that case, I, you know, my pro career would probably, you know, almost be done too because I, you know, the team's not going to take a guy with two torn knees right now. You know, mm-hmm. you got to get you got to get back on the they court. They want to see what you do first. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So um, I'm grateful for that, and um, that's what I'm working towards right now. Uh, so basically – with the with the new NAL deal and having all this t- free not necessarily free time but time that you can't necessarily dedicate to basketball how have you grown yourself as a brand this past year cuz i feel like i mean the NAL deal thing happened and that first month everybody was getting brand deals right like everyone was was supporting their local sandwich shop was supporting their local dealership was getting you know the big ones were getting the Gatorade well every everyone was in it, but it's like your name has been one that i feel like has still been getting like small deals here and there i don't know how you know i see it as like an instagram post but like i don't know what else they're doing with you but like like you're still like like your name 
image and likeness is still rising while maybe your actual court uh yeah. like ranking is kind of staying the same because they want to see what you can do yeah so like how have you took an advantage of this past year basically in the nal thing and whatnot to grow yourself as yeah. a brand for me it's been bigger than kind of basketball you know yeah. it's been like because one day i know i'm going to be done playing basketball you know whether that's two years from now or 10 15 whatever it is you mm -hmm. know so you know obviously all these kids went out and some got you know the elite players got millions of dollars and nike and gatorade and, and that stuff's great you know mm -hmm. i'm obviously not going to get that right now you know so how can i find different revenues and find different sources and, and brand myself to companies to you know like the karma thing you know mm -hmm. being putting out good energy um you know re, um, treating companies well with respect you know they're going to treat me with well respect so you know i didn't make like, a lot of money but you know i made a pretty good handful of money and and um you know with some you know different kind of merchandising things and and now i'm with an agency um you know making a little bit more money so um you know i kind of just tried to brand myself for a bigger picture you know yeah. one day is um you know maybe i'm getting hired by this company down the line and i'm making way more money than i would be getting you know in nil maybe you know, a couple thousand dollars compared to signing a you know contract with the company and making a lot of money so yeah. that's kind of the approach that i took on it is like you know brand yourself brand your image um you know let people know who you are create that image of yourself as this like you know pretty good guy and and you know loves basketball and that kind of stuff and at the end of the day like that good energy is going to come back so um, just trying to stay like relevant to, mm -hmm. you know, I think that's a big deal is like people get these deals and then it's like, oh, they're content and, and that kind of stuff, but staying relevant and searching for more. And, and now, I, like I said, I have an agency that does that kind of work for me, but, um, to keep know, growing your worth. Cause like exactly. if they paid you a hundred dollars for this, but if now a month later you want to be worth $250 exactly. and then a year later you want to be worth $2,000 for that same post, you know, instead yeah. of just being steady, if there was like a, like, like a shoe company to sign you, or what shoe company would you be leaning towards? Like. Like which, what do you rock the most or what do you like to wear? Like definitely rock Nike the most, but mm -hmm. like, I feel like I'm the kind of guy that like wouldn't mind doing something with like new balance or something like, like outside mm -hmm. of the box. You know what I'm saying? Cause Does new balance do basketball shoes. They do. Yeah. Kawhi's Kawhi's with new balance. Oh yeah. 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 Kawhi's yeah. with new balance. So Kawhi and Jack Harlow got that commercial or whatever they're hooping it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would probably go Nike, but you know, if, money talks so if, if someone what, matched like, nike's yeah, offer yeah, depending on what the money was and all that kind of stuff but i mean like i got dunks on my feet right now and i'm you know i, I have so much nike that I'd yeah because they would plug you in with a lot more than just the basketball shoes <laughs> yeah, they get exactly. you every drop exactly. well because i i mean i'm no I'm, i don't work for nike or in their marketing department but i'd say if you come back and have a really good year when you come back off both the knee yeah. injuries i i don't see how you wouldn't be almost like a, an amazing campaign for one of these brands to be honest like that's the that's the best thing about it too is like you know obviously there's there's beauty in the struggle and, and yeah you know i had to go through something that it was out of my control um you know my dad one thing i remember from my dad who told me at a very young age is you know you can only control what you can't control if it's like uncontrollable you can't control that kind of stuff so mm -hmm. you know these things happen to me and how can i control that to when i come back you know being able to show people who i am again you know type of deal and and with doing that comes you know maybe a nike deal comes like you know gator mm -hmm. that kind of thing is uh, making the most of the opportunities and at the end of the day like when i get that chance to be out there on the court again like making the most of it and you know if, if something comes from it great and if it doesn't i'm content with like inside you know because i know i did it the right way so mm -hmm. yeah yeah what's your what's your interest outside of basketball now we kind of just like talked about yeah the whole journey i feel like yeah, kind of legit. but i know i mean we've talked about how you you want to get into like the podcasting game and stuff like that but what, what what's your other like ventures that you or things you just like doing yeah i love to cook some mm -hmm. but people don't really know um i love cooking food i mean we as d1 athletes we get like three meals a day and all that kind of stuff so we're treated pretty well but i like to do a little bit on my own um i like to read uh, i just got into reading really recently i was kind of like you know against reading but it wasn't something i love to do but mm -hmm. you know that when i was hurt i didn't have much else to do so i kind of got into some new books and kind of some like self-help books and that kind yeah. of stuff have been interesting to me um and then you mentioned the podcast is something that 
um, I'm really interested in doing. I was interested, like right when NIL dropped, I was like, maybe I should start a podcast. But then I put it on the back burner. I was like, oh, I'll worry about that some other day and, and that kind of deal. And now that I'm, that I'm here back around the second time, I was like, I really want to do this because, first of all, I feel like I have a lot of knowledge to share about, you know, life and, and basketball, but also like with injury and, and, you know, so many kids playing sports deal with some sort of injury at some point. And if I can get on the mic and have people listen to me um, and share just some sort of knowledge or some sort of little advice if you can take like one little thing um i want to give back and be able to do that so mm. that's something that's important to me and, and i like to talk too so getting on the yeah. mic and uh having guests and that kind of stuff would be fun so um but yeah and i you know i also do just a lot of i do a lot of just you know meditation and, and self-evaluation and that kind of stuff and um just being able to get with myself for you know whether it's five to ten fifteen minutes a day i read a book called the mindful athlete um, and it's, uh, basically a book that, um, this, the guy that wrote it was the, the mind coach of the bulls when they won their six championships. And he talks about how it's important to just, you know, become one with yourself and just be able to like, you know, sit down, maybe it's five minutes a day and just like, think about what's going on, things you can control, things you can't control and how you're going to go about that in your day. And it's, it's something super little and it's something we probably do unconsciously, mm -hmm. but consciously being able to do it. And, um, you know, that's something that with this second injury I've been, uh, really focusing on doing and, and trying to, you know, better my, better my outlook and my attitude on, you know, what's going on with my own athletic ability right now and that kind of yeah. stuff. So yeah, everything, I mean, at the end of the day, everything relates to basketball, man. Like, yeah. like I said, I, I, not only do I love it, but I live it like basketball is my life and it's going to be my life for a long time, whether it's playing or coaching or whatever it may be is, um, I'm probably not coaching because I don't know if I, I want to coach, but um, pregame yeah, commentation. Yeah, maybe uh, maybe I'm a commentator for the Timberwolves one day, something yeah. like that. You know? Yeah, I already I could literally already see it now. Like one day, like you come back home, whether it's ten years from now, fifteen years from now, however long it may be. But like I could definitely see you doing like the the pre like. Like the like you almost being like you know like do the college football Sundays or whatever like yeah, yeah, yeah. and they have like this when they when they travel there's always like that that special guest that's like the host like oh, yeah. I could definitely see you being like a consistent host for like Gopher stuff Timberwolves stuff and then you're just like that figure when like Gopher stuff happens you know like yeah, yeah. the more you grow and the more you just build your brand like it just be, it kind of becomes that. almost like PJ Fleck has just became like this Minnesota face mm -hmm. you know and you're kind of like. Um, on the right track to kind of become like that Minnesota face for basketball because yeah. you're from the hometown like you have all this stuff behind you you have a lot of buzz you have a great story built up behind you that you could like like you, you'd be like the, like the face and the reason why a lot of kids stay in town like yeah. like all this type well, of stuff yeah, I'm, like, not I'm not gonna lie it's, it's kind of a like I'm aware and it's kind of a goal for me you know yeah. it's like I was dealt you know I didn't think this like how it was gonna go I thought I was gonna go to Minnesota for a year you know be really good and go pro and make a lot of money yeah. you know and, and it didn't go that way right so um you know you can't control that but you can control like i said how you how you react to it you know mm -hmm. so at the end of the day if i'm able to you know give back to to minnesota and, and do stuff that i love to do you know and, you know talk about sports talk about basketball that kind of stuff like hell yeah like for sure no question mm -hmm. because you know it's it's getting money somehow you know and, and it's basketball and i love like i said i love all facets of basketball i love playing i love talking i love you know coach like whatever it may be i, I just love mm -hmm. hoops so it, it's something that it would be you know really fun for me and i think i think i could do a good job at it so yeah you did a camp yeah. once right uh, yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I train kids and do camps and that kind of stuff. And, you know, all that stuff's good. But I think at the end of the day, I, I would like to do something, you know, not more behind the scenes, but, you know, I don't know if coaching is a thing for me. But, mm -hmm. I mean, it could be for sure. But, um, you know, we'll see what revenue it takes me down and what bridges I got to cross next. So, yeah, we'll see. There's this one video I, you posted of you, like, training, and you had one foot on a piece of turf shooting free throws. Yeah. What what I was I was a little confused with that. I was about to post it on like on the waterway page and be like, is this the like, next level training that I haven't heard of? Like but what what's the deal with taking the shoes off, putting the shoe putting a foot on the turf and shooting the free throws? Like, you know what's funny is is there's no secret in that. It was just me kind of being funny. Okay. <laughs> but uh like I was hurt, right? So I was yeah. in the brace and all that kind of stuff and um honestly what it was is I was about to go lay in bed and I didn't want dirt on my sock. 
So I put a piece of turf there so my sh- my feet wouldn't get dirty. Oh, because he because he didn't have a shoe. He exactly. Put a shoe yeah, on. I could put a shoe on because of my knee. So I, was, I thought it was some like sensory <laughs> stimulation issue. Like you don't want to put your foot on concrete, <laughs> but you could put it on the turf because it's a little bit softer. I sh- that's what I should have told you. I should have said, "Oh, it's some sort of neuromuscular." Yeah. Error. So when you're when you're shooting, your feet are tired. And <laughs> late in the fourth quarter, the grass stimulates you. And you know what's you, you know what's so funny about that kind of stuff though is so many guys are getting into so many of these trainers are getting into that kind of stuff mm-hmm. and. I won't say I hate it, but like to be better at basketball, you need to play basketball. Yeah, you know, which is cool. Which is cool, and it's like in anything too, with any sport, with anything you do. Like, like if you're making music, how do you get better at making music? You make more music, mm-hmm. right? You get in the studio and you write, you write lyrics down, and you get on the mic and you switch your flows up and mm-hmm. and, you, and you create different sounds and you make more music. You don't you don't go out and try to you know put a weird hat on so you're thinking about that whatever it may be you know it's, yeah. it's there's, the no, same. there's no shortcuts yeah no there's no shortcuts and it's the same thing in basketball too is like you know you can do all this like i saw a video of this guy like rolling trash cans at kids it's like mm-hmm. when in a game are you gonna get like a person zooming at you like that you know, yeah. people don't play defense like that you know so it's like keeping keeping things real and you know all that kind of stuff is i think important whether mm-hmm. whatever you're doing you know it's uh I think people are trying to make things, you know, so difficult and switch things up. But no, let the kids go out there and hoop, get in mm-hmm. the studio and make music, all that kind of stuff. You know, just keep it simple. Yeah, speaking of trainers and videos, what do you think of like the community of like all the hoopers and stuff that are kind of just like famous on Instagram? They're not they're, they're out of high school, they're not playing on a college team, but they're just like, like I feel like there's a few guys like that that I can't think of any of their names, but like like a Julian Newman. You know, yeah, Newman. Yeah, yeah, like they're they're just popular online and like I mean you can make money off that way, but like yeah. so it's like. Like, do those types of basketball players uh, have, like, this, like get respected by, let's say, like, a higher-tier college guys where they're like, damn, he's a hooper? Or is it just like that guy can do the crazy between the legs, spin behind the back, throw it up, and it goes in? That's, you know, that's like, all it is. It, yeah. It's cool. Don't get, like, we like watching that kind of stuff because mm-hmm. it's different, but it's not hoops. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. you're not going to go out in a college basketball game and do that. It, yeah. You know, it's, it's just a different – it's just a different thing. So, like, yeah. you know, at the end of the day, you got to respect the hustle and the grind of, like, you know, a lot of these guys got millions of followers and they're monetizing mm-hmm. their content and they're making money off of it and, and good for you, but that's not that's not basketball. You know? Yeah. It, it's some other sort of revenue. Yeah. And with the guy it's like some form me, of entertainment. Exa- sure. Yeah, it, no, yeah. no doubt. Like, yeah. I'll watch it. I'll watch it all the time. You know, I'll mm-hmm. comment on it. I'll like it, all that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, like, when we're talking hoops and we're talking, like, a person that, like, loves the game for, like, what it should be yeah. is, like, that's – not what that is but mm-hmm. but don't get me wrong like you got to respect that kind of hustle and grind and for especially you know you talk about a guy like julian newman who's like only like five foot tall or something like he's not gonna make you know college basketball roster mm-hmm. but he can go out there and monetize his content and you know create that kind of um you know journey that people love to watch so mm-hmm. yeah it's uh it's definitely interesting that's a good mm-hmm. question do you, you like watching any other any other leagues let's say besides like the nba WNBA, and college uh like you know they have like the big th- like the big three stuff mm-hmm. and um uh, what's the one that is like Revolt TVs, like the league? It's like talk about the TV, uh, the basketball league, or whatever. Where it's like there's like a celebrity, the celebrity one, where it's like a celebrity and their oh, and their yeah, and their yeah, homies yeah. from their hometown. I like Drewski was yeah. commentating it. Yeah, Jack Harlow was playing it. Yeah, what's the? I forget. What I can't remember called. what it's called, but that stuff is awesome, bro. Yeah, like, like is there any other leagues that you like? Obviously, it's not like true like professional basketball, but there's just like it's, it's entertainment. But it so. brings, but it brings the um, you know energy and excitement to basketball. You know, mm-hmm. like. Yeah, Jack Harlow's not gonna like even Drake. Drake's got his own league or whatever. You mm-hmm. know, like yeah, Drake's really not that cold at hoops. But mm-hmm. like the way that he loves to hoop and like he won like his own championship trophy and like got a rig and stuff is like that brings attention to basketball. And you gotta mm-hmm. you know you gotta love it. Like at the end of the day, it's it's you know you are at the peak, right? Like mm-hmm. the peak of basketball. And, and yeah, they're kind of down you know down lower, but like they're bringing excitement and energy towards basketball. So you got to love that kind of stuff. And especially when it's like a list celebrities like Drake and, and you know guys like you know Jack Harlow, Trusky, like big big names in, in, mm-hmm. in media and in you know um, just in culture in, in our world today. So uh, you know they're playing basketball. So you got to love it. You know I was actually I was on vacation uh, two weeks ago and we were in Turks and Caicos and. We were just driving around. We saw a basketball court, and we pulled up, and I sat there, and I watched, like, these six or seven kids play basketball for, like, an hour, and they didn't have shoes on, like, not they're like, these poor kids, and they were playing basketball because they loved it, and mm-hmm. I was like, this is what it's about, you know? Like, yeah. you play this game because you love to do it with your homies or whatever it may be, and, like, at the end of the day, that's what that's the reason why I do it because mm-hmm. I love, love to play it, and it's, it's a... 
It's not any any person telling you, oh, you got to go hoop or, oh, you got to go to the park and get some shots up today. These kids are going there because they love to do it, love hanging out with their homies, mm-hmm. whether it's, you know, trying to get better at basketball or not. You know, I was talking to one of the kids and he's like, yeah, I want to I want to move to the States one day and play basketball. And I was like, bro, that's a great goal. Like, why can't you do that? Mm-hmm. You know, type of deal. Why can't you leave this island and, and you know, make yourself a, a college basketball player? So it's nice. uh, it's bringing awareness to the game, which I love for sure. Thanks. Did you watch that And One documentary on Netflix? No, I haven't. There's an And One documentary where it explains like the rise and fall of And One, how they like controlled the like the street basketball scene, and like everyone was wearing their shoes, and then one day Nike just kind of put the hammer down and paid for a bunch of advertising and like shit it on them. I believe it. But believe that's a good one to watch. It kind of shows like the the rise of like street ball like people just playing in the streets and then they toured from city to city and played street games against whoever was the best in their city which is awesome too like you yeah. know talk about like the venice basketball league yeah. and that kind of stuff is like people are playing like basketball is such a great sport because you don't need the equipment mm-hmm. you know you just need there's hoops everywhere you yeah know, you can go find a hoop and you can call a couple guys up and play basketball and it's and it's enjoying so yeah. i think that's what so interesting and there's so many like too. ways to like, like every like like you always, I don't always like to associate. There's so many ways to monetize of playing basketball. But like, if you're an, if you're an older guy and you want to play basketball, like you have to make money off it because you have to make money to live a life mm-hmm. in the world. Like this is how it works. Yeah. And with basketball, there's so many you know like little tournaments, leagues like that, like street game, like uh, games and everything. Where it's like, like basketball is like one of very few sports that you could just work at it all, all the time and not be a professional but actually make a living off of it whether it's winning tournaments or just competing in these leagues and making small contracts or even hustling yeah. people on the streets yeah, yeah literally it's like, kind of stuff. like you can't do that with football because you need all the pads infrastructure baseball not really you need more people yeah, like that's just a little too much to do I mean, like, you can go and play one on one with somebody for 20 bucks and make money off that guy yeah it's not yeah. like a steady revenue but yeah but like know, there's so just, many ways of doing it yeah. and it's just like that's what makes yeah. me love the sport too so much is just like I can it's the only sport where, like, you can just go play in your yard by yourself. Like, you know, baseball, you got to have somebody to play with. Like, you know, you play and catch with the football, you got to have somebody to play with. You know, soccer, you got to have, like, a net, and they're not around as much. But basketball, you got to hoop, and it's you and a ball. And, like, it's just, uh, it's always been a peaceful place for me. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. What is your favorite thing about the U of M campus? Mm-hmm. Besides the, the, anything sports? You yeah, can't say the bat. You can't say the barn. You can't say the teammates. You can't say um, the staff. Man, you put me on the spot. I would say hmm. it can be a very broad description. Yeah, let me think. Let me think. But you know what it is? Is I think because it's um it's different for me because I didn't have it at Northern because it's such a small school. It's just like honestly, just like the people. You know, like. Mm-hmm how big the campus is like being able to just like hop on my scooter and just like walk, like see so many people and see so many different faces like i love that kind of shit like at northern it was a small campus and and i i love the city and all that kind of stuff and i just mm-hmm. like i love seeing new people meeting new people interacting with people like um you know i'll hold the door for somebody interact with them say hi i think just like forming connections with, i know that's kind of a broad thing but like just like being able to meet new people and, and you know so many different people that you know I probably would have never met if it wasn't for Minnesota. Do you pay attention to the Barstool Gophers Instagram page? A little bit, yeah, a little mm-hmm. bit, a little bit. There is they did a poll for the best restaurant in Dinky. I don't know if you've seen that. Did they? I, I wonder if they it, have. No. I'm gonna see if I can find the list and then maybe you can kind of just give us your opinion because they did it a while ago. I wish ago. we had more like mom and pop shops in Dinky Town though. There's a lot of uh, a lot of chains, fran- yeah, franchises, yeah, a lot of franchise chain. for sure. Um, oh yeah, they did a, let's see, best foods on campus, question mark, let's see. Um, so they got, uh. What's the final four? Is there a final four? Yeah. Let me read off every restaurant. They had Cane's, Crunchies, Jimmy John's, Schwing Chang, Burger King, <laughs> Wally's, K-Bop, Chipotle, Gray's, My Burger, I don't know what that one is, Blaze Pizza, Chick-fil-A, Crispin Green, Tony's Diner, Pizza by the Slice Mail, Mesa, Burger Bagels, Insomnia Cookies, Noodles, Qdoba, so like everything, right? Hong Kong, so basically yeah, everything in here for everyone that knows. Frank Andreas, Buffalo Wild Wings, Panda Express, Pop Billy Domino's, DP Doe, and the Test Kitchen. And the final four was, um, uh, is it Tony's Diner and Mesa Pizza versus maybe that was the final? I'm trying to see. Was that the final? Uh, it was Tony Diner's and Mesa Pizza versus someone else. They didn't update it on their page for it. It was on their okay. stories, okay. but. 
I don't know. Do, what's your favorite restaurants? Tony's, 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 so, Tony's, 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 Tony's my guy, man. He, he feeds our like whole team and all that kind of stuff. And so I definitely go Tony's, but I love Mesa too. Like mm-hmm. a late night slice of pizza. That's fire. Um, the new crunchies place is kind of fire too. I don't know if I had, had that one time. Yeah. It's kind of good. And then I love oh. Crispin green when I'm eating healthy. So Crispin green smoothies are fire. Yeah. I was, I was looking, looking for a smoothie fire. spot for so long. Okay. I found the story highlight. So it was like a story poll thing that they did. Okay. And it was Final Four Canes versus Chipotle and um, Frank and Andres and Mesa Pizza were the Final Four, it seems okay. like. I'm taking Mesa over Frank's. I don't know if that's a crazy take because everybody loves Frank's, but. Frank's won, so. Damn, they won. So the final matchup, that's just the final matchup was Canes versus Frank and Andres. Well, come on, we're taking Canes every time. Canes but, won. Yeah. Canes won best food on campus, so it seems like. I mean,. It's probably not wrong because people go to it so much, but mm-hmm. like, I, I'm taking I'm taking Tony's and I'm taking Mesa over Frank and Andreas. That's probably a strong take because people love Frank and Andreas, but mm-hmm. I think Mesa's better and it's cheaper too. I went to yeah before I went to Mesa a lot before I went to Frank's. There's just like one type of pizza I like at Frank's, like I don't know, either Chipotle chicken one or something. That's, I just get that every time and their fries. Mesa's goaded though too. I fuck with them because they we can put their flyers up in there. Yeah, no, it's so. smooth. Uh, you fuck with like all the other sports and stuff. Yeah, yeah, like, that's that's that's. I seen EB sideline at the mm-hmm. football game. Yeah, that's the other thing too is like when you ask me my favorite things about Minnesota is like, I get to go to you know sporting events that I would pay money to go to and I get to go mm-hmm. to them for free. You know, like I get to be on the football game pregame, like mm-hmm. on the football field. Like, come on, bro. Like that's that's so exciting and and people like shot my name and like I'm taking mm-hmm. pictures of people like. I never like like I said, bro. I never thought that would be me, and yeah. now that it is, it's it's an exciting it's an exciting feel, and um, it's so exciting. so I, I try to go and support. You know, I went to the volleyball game yesterday. Mm-hmm. I was at the soccer game uh, Thursday. I went to the football game. Like, I'll definitely try to go to you know all the events because you know, I'm not gonna be sitting in my room. Like, I'd rather be out doing stuff, mm-hmm. hanging out with people, meeting new people. So that's you know that's that's kind of the person I am for sure. Yeah, of course, well. If you don't know Parker Fox, now you know him. Yes, sir. Tap in with him on social media. You're going to find him on the court once that knee gets better. So we slamming on everybody else. You're, we all showed Jackson some of your highlights before we started. Yeah. Nah, man. It's my favorite. Like I said, bro, it's my life. It's my what about favorite. is long hair Parker Fox going to come back for the return? Or are we gonna... We've been thinking about that, too. we got to have to, you know, I've, I really haven't. Because I told my dad, I was like, Think about remember how good I was when I had long hair. Like I got to bring the long hair back. So I don't know. I haven't. I'm not saying I'm bringing it back yet. Maybe maybe leave a comment. Leave a you know, <laughs> yeah. something like that. Cool. So yeah, let, let us know. Let, if let us know. Long hair, short hair, Parker. What but you think? I haven't decided yet, but it's definitely in the back of my mind. Which mm-hmm. is funny that you bring it up because I was pretty good when I had the long hair going on. So might have to bring that back. Might not. We'll see. But um, I'm just. Uh, Trying to get the knee right first, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Tap in with Parker, U of M basketball extraordinaire. Uh, come shop with us at one five two one Como Avenue Southeast in Dinky Town Como yes, area. Do that, do that. All my shoes are from one yep. All of them, all of them. I'm plugging in. If you are another athlete at the U of M and got a good story to tell, make sure you hit us up as well. You know, we're trying to work with a little more athletes. We might get this little show going with Parker too. We have to stay tuned for that. Yeah, stay tuned. Um. But yeah, we're trying to we're trying to work with everybody out here, man. If you don't know about Water Wave, now you do. I'm sure we're getting a lot of athlete people from around the country that have no clue what we do. But we cover a lot of Minnesota stuff, including music, athletes, creatives, all around. But thank you for coming. First, you, not our first our first Gopher athlete. Okay. I think. Hopefully, I started off good. Hopefully, I, started I think you're our first good. Gopher athlete on the show. Let's just say I was, even if I wasn't. Well, current athlete, because we actually had Mac Irv, who oh, played okay, basketball okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, back in the day. Yeah, funny, funny. So, he, well, he, he wasn't playing. He's not playing right now, but yeah, yeah, yeah. he used to. But First current. Current. We'll take it. We'll take it. I think, I think you are, unless I'm, unless I'm mistaken, but I don't think. I don't think yeah, because we only did a couple of basketball players. We did, like, Jordan Horn and you, I think. So, yeah, I think yeah, you yeah. might be only two basketball players. Right. But, yeah. Peace out, y'all. Thanks for tuning in. Subscribe, like, share, all that. Five stars, comment, like. Do you always uh, call it?